Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Justin, and you're watching Travel This. Have you ever wondered how Venice in Italy came to be a city of canals? Stick around to find out. And later, I'll bring you on a tour of Venice, where I'll show you five historically significant landmarks. The story of Venice begins in the 5th century AD, when the Roman Empire was beginning to decline. At the time, Italy was constantly invaded by barbarian tribes from the north. To escape these invaders, many people fled to the lagoon islands located just off the coast of northeastern Italy near the Adriatic Sea. The islands had a natural barrier against these invaders being surrounded by water, and people were able to live relatively peaceful lives. Over time, more and more people moved to these lagoon islands and they formed small communities building houses and small structures made of wood and mud. A major problem arose in those early days. Due to the low-lying and muddy islands, flooding was a persistent problem. Homes made of wood would quickly rot and sink into the muddy terrain. These early settlers had to come up with a solution, and so during the 9th century, they thought up a brilliant plan. Going forward, everything would be built upon wooden stilts, driven into the mud at the bottom of the lagoon. This would solve the flooding problem since their communities would be elevated. The new plan would also prove very durable since houses on stilts could be built with better materials like Istrian stone, a marble-like limestone that's impermeable and strong. So maybe now you're wondering, well what about the wooden stilts driven into the mud? Wouldn't this rot and the entire foundation collapse? It's a great question, but thanks to the beauty and chemistry, the wooden stilts have survived to this day lasting hundreds of years. The timber stilts measured between 4 and 8 meters or 13 and 26 feet in length were driven deep into the mud until they hit the clay bottom of the lagoon floor. Submerged into the mud and below water level, microorganisms weren't able to decay the timber stilts, allowing them to survive all these years. In fact, the wooden foundation beneath the city has even ossified over time into a hardened stone-like structure due to the regular Adriatic seawater that flows through the foundation. And to top it off, these early Venetians were smart to use impermeable Istrian stone. Besides its use in the buildings above, they incorporated this material into the foundation as well. The stone was used on top of the wooden platforms for its strength and ability to resist erosion and moisture. It's estimated that more than 90% of the stone used to build Venice is Istrian. Having ingeniously overcome this environmental challenge, the population of the Lagoon Islands grew and so did the need for more space. Bridges were constructed to connect the islands together and they started to dredge canals for access to the waterways. The island communities morphed into a cohesive larger community working together to transport goods and people from one island to another. By the 10th century, the population of the lagoon had grown to a thriving city-state called Venice, or Venezia in Italian. It became a center for trade and commerce, with ships coming from all over the Mediterranean. Traded goods included spices, Florentine silks, and other textiles and precious metals. It wasn't long after that Venice became a powerful and wealthy maritime city-state that would prove to be one of Europe's most important cultural and political centers. Due to its strategic location, favorable economic conditions, diplomacy and alliances, and powerful naval fleet, Venice rose to power. Venetian merchants established trading posts in ports throughout the Mediterranean and beyond which allowed them to control the flow of goods and earn significant profits. Alliances were formed and favorable negotiated trade deals were made with other powerful states including the Byzantine and Ottoman empires. With their wealth came naval power. Venice was able to invest heavily in its navy. The Venetian navy was especially effective in the Mediterranean where it dominated over sea powers like Genoa and Pisa. But despite its success, Venice remained a city built on water and over time, Venice has experienced sinking, and today poses the complex engineering challenge to save and preserve Venice from sinking further. So why is this happening? Since the city is built on a group of islands in a lagoon in a geological depression, over time, natural subsidence of the land has caused the city to sink. And then there's the groundwater extraction from beneath the city, for both industrial and residential use. The Venetians learned quickly that drilling wells for drinking water was posing a major problem to the city's foundational integrity. 
Groundwater extraction caused the land to sink further and in 2015, the Italian government passed a law that prohibits new groundwater extraction in the Veneto region, which includes Venice. Old wells in Venice are still in use today, but they are monitored closely to ensure they are not causing any damage to the city's foundation. Another factor is the construction of buildings and bridges, which have altered the natural flow of water in and around Venice causing further subsidence, while cruise ships and increased boat traffic have led to erosion of the seabed. Today, Venice remains one of the most beautiful and unique cities in the world, with its intricate canals, stunning architecture, and rich history. The city's remarkable story serves as a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of its people. Will Venice be able to overcome its modern-day challenge of a sinking city? With human ingenuity and the spirit of determination, I believe anything is possible. So now, let's take a look at 5 historically significant landmarks you'll want to visit when you're here. Number 1. St. Mark's Basilica This beautiful Byzantine-style basilica is located in St. Mark's Square and is one of the most famous landmarks in Venice. It dates back to the 11th century and is known for its intricate mosaics and ornate decorations. The basilica was built to house the relics of St. Mark, which had been brought to Venice from Alexandria, Egypt. The story of how the relics of St. Mark came to Venice is steeped in legend and is not entirely clear. According to tradition, the body of St. Mark was smuggled out of Alexandria by Venetian merchants who hid the remains in barrels of pork and cabbage to avoid detection by Muslim authorities after a battle in 828 AD. One of the most famous features of St. Mark's Basilica is the Pala d'Ora, a spectacular altarpiece made of gold, enamel, and precious gems. This stunning work of art is considered one of the finest examples of Byzantine art in the world. Next up, number two, Doge's Palace. The Doge's Palace is a magnificent, gothic-styled palace that was once home to the Doge, the ruler of the Venetian Republic and the seat of government from the 9th century until the fall of the Republic in 1797. It was built in the 14th century and is known for its beautiful architecture, ornate decorations, and historical significance. One of the most striking features of the palace is the Scala dei Giganti, or staircase of the giants, which leads to the Doge's apartments. The staircase is decorated with statues of two giants who represent the mythical figures of Mars and Neptune. The giant Neptune is depicted holding a trident symbolizing Venice's maritime power. For a darker side of Venice's history, you might want to tour the prison cells located on the lower level of the palace. These cells were notorious for their harsh conditions and are a reminder of a more brutal Venice past. Next is number 3, the Peggy Guggenheim Collection. A modern art museum located in a beautiful 18th century palace, the Palazzo Venne de Leoni, overlooking the Grand Canal. It houses an impressive collection of modern and contemporary art, including works by Picasso, Pollock, and Dali. The museum is dedicated to the memory of Peggy Guggenheim, who was an American art collector and influential patron of the art world during the mid-20th century. Aside from the impressive collection, the Palazzo Veni de Leoni is a beautiful example of Venetian architecture you won't want to miss. Moving on to number 4, the Rialto Bridge. The Rialto Bridge is one of the most iconic bridges in Venice and spans the Grand Canal. It was built in the 16th century and is known for its elegant design and beautiful views of the city. Designed by Antonio da Ponte, it replaced a previous wooden bridge that had collapsed. This one is constructed from Istrian stone and features two inclined ramps that meet at the top to form a central portico lined with shops and market stalls. The bridge is a reminder of the city's history having played an important role in commerce and trade. And ending at number 5, Santa Maria della Saluti. This beautiful Baroque-style church was built in the 17th century to commemorate the end of a devastating plague in 1630 and as a tribute to the Virgin Mary. It is located at the mouth of the Grand Canal and is known for its distinctive dome and beautiful interior. The church was designed by Baldassare Longhena and its facade is made of white Istrian stone featuring statues of saints and angels. Today, it is an important symbol of Venice's history and culture, also serving as a testament to the resilience of the city and its people. Finally, I must add the obvious thing you must do when in Venice. Of course, the city's mode of transportation is via its network of canals, and so you won't want to miss an opportunity to get around by the traditional Venetian gondola. 
It's truly an unforgettable experience, especially if your guide sings traditional Venetian songs along the way. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any upcoming travel content. And let me know in the comments below what travel destinations you'd like to see next. Until next time!